Welcome back to Cadwell Park for the next race in the Caterham Weekend. It's the second race for the Mission Motorsport Caterham Road Sport Championship. As mentioned before, champion Taylor O'Flanagan isn't here, but on the pole spot is third place position man, or was before the weekend, number 59, Tom Cockerell. Tom, a great win to add to your ever-increasing tally. So, uh, Mr. Bush, right with you. You confident in keeping him behind? Absolutely. Uh, hoping for a repeat of yesterday. I'm sure it's going to be another fast, frantic race. Um, hopefully another clean one. Send it and see what happens. Good man, can't blame you at all. So is it uh, eye on the next uh, rung up the ladder for next season? Uh, let's get this race done and dusted with. <laughs> Put the car on the trailer as it's sitting now and we'll... Uh, I want to be back. Um, obviously it's an expensive hobby but enjoyment it brings is massive so yeah anything i can do to be here next year i'll be here cautious optimism don't blame you at all best of luck tom Thank you. as uh, he will lead the pack away joining him on the front row is car number 22 hugo bush who coming into this weekend was just one point behind uh, tom cockerell in the championship hugo great result yesterday so uh are you keeping an eye on uh, mr cockerell in front of you yeah, I mean, I think the maths is fairly simple. Win the race and, and come second in the championship. That's uh, that's the aim. Yeah, I mean, you, the, the championship battle is so, so close. Uh, oh, no, I thought that you were being released there, but no, not quite. Uh, oh, no, yes, you are. No, nope, never mind. I can't finish that question. <laughs> I was just about to say the championship positions being so close. Is he going to be uh, able to keep Don Mansberger behind him? We will see as the race now continues. Over to Scott Woodwiss in the commentary box. Stream. The last three races of the Cajun Road Sports season for 2021 are just about to get underway. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, including this one. Season finale for the Mission Motorsport Caterham Road Sport Championship. And whilst the title has already been wrapped up provisionally by Taylor O'Flanagan, who's chosen to sit out these last two races to assure his champion provisional championship status, there is still a titanic battle going on for second place in the championship between Tom Cockrell, Hugo Bush and Dominique Mansberger. And it will be the supervisionally decided here as to which uh, other three drivers which two end up on the podium. Basically, three into two doesn't go on this occasion. So, uh, Scott Woodward's here alongside, once again, Chris Hutchinson, who, again, has got his uh, spreadsheet out to work out connotations. So, for this occasion, looking at where we are, by the looks of things, it's pretty much what you, we've, you've calculated, three points between the top three with... Cockrell ahead by one and then Hugo Bush behind by a further two. Yeah, that's right. But again, it's about where your drop scores are and what you have to do to start scoring points. And uh, and for example, Dominic Mansberger has to start again. He has to get fourth place before he even starts gaining points on that on that championship. And and and, and Cockrell's even worse off. He's got to start getting a podium before he starts gaining points. Whereas uh, I think Hugo Bush, yep, he can actually start scoring points as soon as he gets into seventh place. So you see how everything can twist and turn. And then Hugo's actually, whilst he's behind on actual points he can actually uh, uh, recover himself back up through this race so yeah it's an absolutely crucial uh, crucial race for them all and they've had such a stellar year uh, some really great racing throughout this uh, uh, you know the whole season and and let's hope they finish it off in style it already has been one of those standout sort of road sport fields we look through the group we'll go through the rest of that conversation in a second because here's the grid it's Cockrell, Bush and Mansberger on the grid together Cockrell on pole for, for his win yesterday Bush second Mansberger third Alex Vincent with a very strong fourth place on, on the start ahead of Batman himself Adam West alongside Peter Mott who starts one of his best results sick Steve Lancaster hoping for better fortunes today after he couldn't convert his fourth place into a better result he starts seventh alongside James Hall on the fourth row with the top ten completed by Toby Boys in ninth and Andy Lund who rounds out the top ten rest of the grid then moves forward into uh, row six with Andrew Berg alongside Marcus Eels in car number six moving backwards to row seven we find Simon Arnold alongside Mark Mike Hilton car 51 and car 70 respectively on row 8 where we find ourselves with 15th place Major Mariadis and Ian Hapgood in the 16th place and I believe that's where the grid concludes for this race so for one last time the road sport drivers will head around and I was, the point I was going to make is that you, you usually get this group of uh, academy drivers that will then merge into road sport and you seem to get one of those kind of 
the term I'm about to use is really cheesy. I want to use the term golden generation, but it's the point I'm trying to make by that by saying that is that you get this group of very evenly matched drivers that all go up together and all are just as quick as each other. And so you've got that in these kind of drivers where you've got, you know, Taylor Flanagan, Hugo Bush, Dominic Mansberger, Tom Cockrell, you know, Gwyn Jones is in there too, Alex Vincent and a couple of others who are just that good and are that closely matched to each other. And so if they all move up to 270s together, you can pretty much guarantee they're all going to be at the front again. They're all going to be battling amongst each other again. And someone out of those four, five, six drivers is going to become the champion most likely because they're all just as formidable as they were in road sport as they're hopefully going to be if they stick around for 270R. I mean, you see the, the quality of the field 270R we've got this year. And obviously, you know, a lot of those would have been road sport a couple of years back. Uh, and yeah, we, we really hope that they carry on through and, and, and do their thing and, and continue these battles onwards. That's what we love to see these uh, sort of year on year. In, uh, and especially as other people come join that battle as well, Scott, because they get on with the car better or they find the wider suspension that you get in 270s gives them a different edge and, and they really sort of click with it. So yeah, it's, uh, it, but this, this road sport is a, such a fundamental foundation year that uh, again, I encourage everyone to do it when they've left the academy just because of how much you learn through this season. Yeah, that is one of the interesting things about the um, you know, the, the upgrade system with these cars because for those who aren't, aren't aware, with the original Academy car, you stay with it for the first four steps of the five-step ladder on Caterham Motorsport. It's only when you get to the Caterham 7 Championship UK that you then have to pick up a brand new chassis, a bespoke chassis for the championship. But from Academy all the way through to 310R, you will pick use the same chassis just upgrading it each time to make it quicker so some drivers adapt to some of the upgrades better than others but it all depends on who can come out on top in the end so the battle of a second place in the championship is on three points separate the top three on the grid and second third and fourth with the points let's find out who can come out on top this time by the red light is about to come on for the last time in the mission motorsport cage and road sport championship lights are out and we're underway for one last time equal start from the front row with a demon getaway from dominic mansberg and the three top in the championship are about to go almost three abreast down towards coppice corner this will not work if they can make it happen. Mansberger looking around the outside of both Hugo Bush and Cockrell. Surely not around Coppice Corner. And they come back into view again. Is it Mansberger? He does take the lead. Incredible move from Dominic Mansberger for third on the grid. Went dare to go three abreast with Cockrell and Bush. Both of them must be thinking as he goes past. How on earth did he manage that? Unbelievable move that, wasn't it? And Hugo Bush had to take the cautious approach and actually back out of that. He was the sandwich, uh, the filling in that sandwich and, and he had nowhere to go. So uh, Mansberger absolutely making a lightning start. But there you go. We've got... Uh, um, Cockrell actually making that move up. Oh, we've got locking tyres as well. Early doors. Oh, there's a bit of contact there, Batman. And uh, that's Adam West and the number 99 there. That's, that's uh, Hall. Uh, that's Toby Boys that's come off oh, the road. Sorry. That's Toby Boys that's come in contact. Bit of a too ambitious move to go up the inside there. Looks like Whips was always going to close the door on that move and a little bit too uh, too late on the brakes to try and make that move stick. So both of them are going to get really going again, but towards the back of the field. Head of the field, though. Mansberger has got back through, so there's been a, literally a change of lead. We've had, what, the lead has changed three times in one lap already. Cock was in there in second place. Bush is there into third. And Alex Vincent, who's had a pretty decent start, is keeping the top three in touch. It's not just a case of these three pulling away. Alex Vincent and co are keeping them on as they come up over the mountain for the first time, lying astern over the crest. It's already at a breakaway seven. And that incident has broken up the pack already to two, to two parts. You've got the leading six or seven, and everyone else who's battling for the positions downwards. Yeah, definitely split out the field, didn't it? But Mansberger, I think that's a, an absolute statement of intent, isn't it? He's, uh, he's come out the, the blocks absolutely sprinting as fast as he can. He wants to be in the lead of this race and stay there. He's not willing to let uh, let that settle in and, and he just wants to be the pace setter. And at the moment, you know, Cockrell following on uh, um, uh, with yeah, Bush following along. So he's the top three in the championship that are fighting it out. We've got movement around the outside of here. We saw that work last time out. I think Mansberg has just got enough momentum to hold that sort of this time round though. Yeah, Cockrell also hit the brakes before he went to go to the outside line because he knew there wasn't going to be enough room to make that stick. Uh, probably because he didn't feel he was as gut see as uh, Masberg who was on that first lap at the start but he's still trying to hold on and what's intriguing is look at the car in fourth place Alex Vincent he's had some really good uh, moments he's some flashes of pace throughout the season and had some really good drives throughout the years so I remember there was I think it was uh, Donington Park where at the start of the season where he didn't uh, get a running qualifying in the first race in the way he came from the back of the grid to about fifth or sixth which is a brilliant drive to start the season there is Alex number 17 in the two-tone green uh, Catron with the green roll bars and the kind of two second. Oh, there's contact behind. Now that was James Hall and 96 Peter Mott. So 
contact between Mott and Hall, and not only did let Mott through, but also Steve Lancaster has jumped on that and moved up to sixth position. So that was a bit of a rude shove there from, from Peter on James, I think, a little bit. Yeah, boys in West actually foothill down to 13th and 14th, so they've got a lot of work now to come back through the field. They've got the speed to do it, and they've got 17 minutes left, but that's a long uh, job ahead of them uh, to, to make their way all the way back through. Uh, currently, with Mansberger out the front with the fastest lap, that does give him the... Sorry, he's in second place now. The last time I looked, he was in the lead. Um, but he was currently... Or he has slightly got a lead in that championship based on the positions, but that'll change every lap, and we'll start getting a feel for where this race is going to end up and how important the, the fastest lap is going to be as well. That is the uh, Adam West Batman of Appreciation Society was back down at the complex of the mountain with signs and flags at the ready. So, although they might have had a bit of a disappointment, even the fact that he was involved in that first lap incident, he's got some work to do from the back of the field. He's some 33 seconds back, and dare I say, if he has, has that much of a problem, it might well be the end of his race temporarily, which if it is, that's a real shame. So, no, Steve Lancaster from that, whether it's the contact or something else, but his left front headlight's been moved to gyro, it's actually pointing sort of uh, out to the side rather than at the front, so it looks a bit, uh, looks a bit askew in that side. Uh, Cockrell then leads the way at the end of lap two, Mansberger in second, Bush in third, Vincent fourth, and then it's Mott, Lancaster, Hall, Lund, Berg, and Hapgood rounding out the top ten, so they make their way down the back straight. Steve Lancaster now under threat from a recovering James Hall, who is now Sands right rear wing. Meanwhile, here's that big scrap for second in the championship. It's Cockrell who leads the way from Mansberger and Bush. They're still going at it, and I've got a feeling for the rest of these 16 odd minutes, Chris, this is a battle that's not going to let up one single moment. These guys will be going at it all the way to the flag. They haven't disappointed us all year, and it certainly looks like they're ready. Uh, Hugo Bush sort of in that sitting, waiting period at the moment, and, and seeing how this battle out front looks. And I, and I think I, if I was in Hugo's uh, p position here, I would also be sitting to see what happens. First of all, because the front three are breaking away, uh, you're being dragged away from that battle coming behind. Um, but equally, um, it was it was angry enough at a battle that he might get get some contact so that's what I'd be doing if I was Hugo but I wouldn't want to leave it too long before I just make sure that I at least assert something into this race. Over the mountain they leap and these top three keeping as they were as they head back into the hall beds once more. Cockrell in control, he wants to try and hold on to that second place in the points if he can and to hold on to the victory to seal it in style. Just further back looks like we've got Marcus Eels, I think that's also Adrian no, Adrian Marietta is at the back of that group. It's Marcus Hills battling with uh, Simon Arnold. And we've also then got... Uh, there's Simon Arnold. Uh, I also think that's Mike Hills, I think, has got past Arnold. So, uh, also in there, too, is... Uh, Mariadis as well, and that's Adam West. Uh, I don't think he recovered from that incident. I think he's, way, he's quite far back, so fortunately, I think his 2021 season has rather come to an abrupt end. I don't want an abrupt end, but uh, that's a real shame. Down the pit straight again. This is now lap four. Uh, still closing in now. Hilton still being chased down by... Uh, that's now Mariadis. Showing Toby Boyce has also stopped on track somewhere, so... Um, yeah, Adam West, as Adam West has continued with Toby Boyce, well, the looks of things has, has been the one that stopped. So he was involved in it, so he's supposed to stop down on track somewhere. Adam West has carried on, but he's way down, so uh, 9, 20 seconds off this, this group at the back of the pack. And essentially just driving around just to be back the points. He'll get some points back, I'm sure, for being a drop score. I think if he's able to do that, but... Um, yeah, it could be. I mean, he, he, it was the front of his car, I think, that hit the, the side of Adam's car. So, you know, again, we always worry about the coolant system, which is right out the front of the Caterham car, and you certainly don't want to run out of that. We see uh, Cockrell there with a little bit of a gap now over Mansberger. Uh, Mansberger having to defend from Bush, so things are changing sort of lap by lap, but again, I don't imagine that's going to stay consistent. It's going to ebb and flow as the pressure comes back. Dominic Mansberger, very wide out of the mountain, actually losing a position there, but he has said he's not willing to give up, and he didn't give up again. So, again, that, that attitude of that car at the moment is he is absolutely not willing to give any any inch on track. Yeah, that all started exiting out of Mansfield. He got a little bit wide on the exit of the left-hander and then was just under, just allowed just the car length or so for Cockrell and also put Bush right into the into the mix to try and get it get past him. And then the pressure that Bush was applying in the next couple of corners just got Mansberg a little bit wide and ragged on the exit over the mountain. And that's what again gave Bush the opportunity to try and have a look to make a move. Mansberger held firm and now he's gonna try and use the slightly clear air that he's got now to try and real as uh, Cockrell back in. The last lap for uh, Cockrell was on 41.607. Compared to that, it was on 42s for Mansberger and Bush. So that's six tenths clear in terms of pace. 1.2 seconds was the gap over the line now. This time Bush has got a really good run on Mansberger looking for the outside line. They're going to be side by side for second on the run. And Bush will have, a, have an attempt to try and pinch second place away if he can round the outside. He can pass around the outside. 
Marcus. He'll have a go for it. He gets edged out wide onto the grass. And to be fair, Masberger held his line. Bush, Bush chose to go around the outside. And Masberger held his line and Bush went onto the grass as a result of it. He was fully alongside. Um, and yeah, it, it all looked like a racing incident to me that. But equally, they can't keep battling like this. If they do, they are going to let Cockrell run away with this. And he will take second place in the championship at the moment. Cockrell is second. And actually, Mansberger and Bush are equal on 274. So they're, they're, by, by having this battle and by uh, Dominic being so defensive, he's actually losing his chance to be uh, second in that championship. I was just taking a glance at your point spreadsheet. As it stands right now, uh, for third place, it would be equal between Mansberger and Bush, but I think Bush would get it on count back of wins because it looks like I think Bush has had three wins to Mansberger's two, unless I'm wrong. Yeah, it might come down to fastest laps as well in, in, on some of those scores, but nevertheless, yeah, we'll... we'll We'll call it as we can, but hopefully they'll be able to separate themselves by the end. But this is what I mean by this. the fastest lap can be absolutely crucial. Fastest lap, one point, doesn't sound much, does it? But actually, that's the equivalent of overtaking someone on track and around this track. That's a really important point to have. Cockrell, again, setting that fastest lap. So he has, uh, he was already the fastest lap before, but he's extending that advantage. Yeah, and that means now he's setting the pace that Mansberger and Bush have to keep up with and have to try and beat and follow in order to be able to uh, try and stop him from taking second in the championship. It looks as though the Cockrell is pretty much in, in the pound seats here, although it's never certain until the chequered flag flies. So we've still got 11 minutes to go until we fully uh, provisionally decide who has picked up second in the points of the course, who picks up the final podium step as well. And whoever it is, is going to get there. Championship trophies in about a month's time at the Casio Awards dinner. Now that's a car. Oh, that's a shame. Adam West is in the pit lane, I'm afraid. So that's Batman season over, I'm afraid. Back to the back cave, or in this case, it's the uh, the, the, the the awning. But anyway, up towards park corner they go. This is the battle towards the rear. This is Adrian Mariadis battling with uh, that's Mike, Mike Hilton. Mike Hilton. So. You can see some of the cars towards the back end of the field having a nice scrap here, which is nothing to see. So Hilton battling with Mariadis. I've always thought that's one of the best, my favourite looking cars in road sport this season. It's been the sort of the 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 the, the dark sort of almost metallic -y silver with the fluorescent yellow. It's quite a nice combination. So one of the smartest looking cars on the grid for me uh, for Adrian Mariadis is uh, Berg and Eels. Uh, and Marcus Eels is in the sort of almost Marlboro McLaren S inspired livery in that car number six. He's chasing down Berg for ninth position. Behind them, we've got Ian Hapgood, Simon Arnold, and Hilton and Mariadis. We did have Adam West, but sadly, he's just pulled the car back into part, back into the uh, into the paddock to end what has been a rather unsavoury end to his 2021 season. Not the way he would have wanted to conclude it. No, absolutely not. It's uh, but you know, not everything is a fairy tale ending as I uh, as I kind of ably performed as well. Uh, but yeah, but the, the uh, this this midfield battle, you should never forget these midfield battles that happen during catering races, and uh, and it's great to be able to focus in on that sometimes. And everyone comes back to Park Fermi with a story, and you can see how competitive it is all the way down the field. So, you know, we rightly couldn't concentrate on the front of the field uh, for a lot of the time, but but all these battles happen, and, and everyone has their stories, and you know, uh, when they come back, and it's quite it's, it's great to hear them if you ever get a chance to go over to Park firmly and listen to the, the people. Here's back uh, with the battle for two and, and Hugo Busch has managed to get past Mansberger. Are they going to work together though um, or has Mansberger, you know, burnt some of those bridges? Maybe Hugo will now uh, treat him with the same <laughs> disdain and let him see the edge of the track. Well, if they are going to work together they've got two and a half seconds to make up which is not always easy on the circuit like this, particularly when they're running out of time. They've got eight and three quarter minutes to do it and it's trying to get two and a half seconds away it's not easy and the fact that now Crockwell's got a bit of a pace advantage yet he's clearly pulling a car length or two on Mansberger probably not answer the question for you he's probably not that willing to work together particularly when there is third place of a championship on the line Crockwell's throwing the car in through the and Hugo Bush already he's putting the foot that he wants to go and close that gap in Mansberger will push as hard as he can in order to try and uh, keep with him but I suspect now that Hugo Bush now that he's got past him his tail's up and he thinks right two and a half seconds and eight and a half minutes bring it on and not only that now that the uh, positions have swapped Hugo Bush does take a clear lead in that third place in the championship so Cockrell's doing what he needs to do to uh, claim that second place Hugo Bush is two points further back uh, at the moment with the positions as they are and it looks like he is showing Mansberger clean pair of heels maybe that is why Mansberger was so desperate to keep him behind because he knew he didn't have quite the pace and knew fastest lap as well which is benefiting him again that puts him one point behind uh, Cockrell in the battle well, now well that takes the far no, that takes the fastest lap away from Bush so it takes one point back so actually that puts them level up for second place doesn't it 
Wow, yes, it's getting it's getting incredibly close. It takes, though. It, it takes it now. So now it is two yeah, seven six level. level on points for that uh, second place in the trophy. So now it, it does depend on countback. So we need to work out some of the countback at some point. Well, at, the, at least on victories at the moment, it still goes to Conquer because I can spot he's got three wins this season. Well, no, there, but if he wins this race, it'll be four. So even then, it will still be. Win. So if he wins this race, it will be Cockrell in second place because it'll be equal on points. But Cockrell will have four wins compared to Bush's. Uh, I think he's got three. So um, that's the key thing here. The only, any, yeah, so that's how it's going to work with that. So, uh, so Hugo Bush still has to actually overtake Cockrell to take second in the championship. But whilst he's ahead of Mansberger, he is able to claim that third place. So down the hill. Uh, Mansberg is coming back at Hugo Bush now, so he's not totally done just yet. Two seconds is the margin. That's interesting. On that lap where he took the fast lap of the race, he took half a second out of Cockrell's lead. So Cockrell's pushing as hard as he dares, but we know how quick Hugo Bush can be when he's allowed to run away with the pace that he's got. Back into Hall Benz. Six and three quarter minutes left on the clock. Six and three quarter minutes left of the season for the Mission Motorsport Caterham Road Sport Championship. In they go through the hairpin. Now through Hall Bend, sort of a, a barn bend. Uh, let's see what the gap is now. It looks relatively stable, if not a tiny bit closer, maybe just under two seconds. Cross the line, they go. The gap is 1.6, and Mansberger takes the fastest lap of the race. So it changes again. Mansberger gets the, the extra point for fastest lap, and he now starts to try and keep himself into this close contention. It now puts him uh, just about. He's now one point behind Hugo Bush according to Chris's calculations. At the moment, it's Cockrell 276, Hugo Bush 275, Mansberger 274. So it changes it again. Two points separating second, third, and fourth. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, like I say, they've been giving us these great racing all, all the time. Uh, there's a car in the pit lane there. Steve Lancaster, I think. So unfortunately, that's his season done, I'm afraid. He was as high as eighth position, so unfortunately, he's out of the race. Um, continue to look at this battle sort of around the 8th, 9th, 10th, uh, 11th place. Again, fiercely competitive here, uh, you know, going up through Charlie's and the cars are absolutely screaming here. They're leaning on that rear left tyre. You've got to get on that power though because this straight's coming up and we know how important the toe is up into Park Bend and this is where most of the actions happen this weekend. Uh, there's Mike Hilton with Hapgood just ahead and uh, yeah, Eels ahead of him. So yeah, battle absolutely, f well and truly three wide coming into Park Bend. That's not going to work, is it? And Marcus, well, did for Marcus Eels, sweeping around the outside and picking up the, the positions. That's him up now into eighth place. Big battle going on behind. We've got Hilton, uh, we've got Hapgood, Hilton and Arnold in there too. And there's unfortunate Steve Lancaster, helmet off already. So they picked something off the front of his car, like a, like a tap or something, but uh, fortunately Steve Lancaster's season is done. In the road sports, and Andy Berg loses it. Oh, and everyone else tries to scatter to avoid it, and Hapgood took to the, uh, to the grass to avoid it. He loses that now to Simon Arnold. Hugo Bush, though, meanwhile, takes the fast snap of the race back again. And Tom... I think Bush is actually overtaking Cockrell for the lead. That was a, I was looking across the line just then, and it looked like Hugo Bush was, champ was actually going into the lead around turn one. Yeah, I think you're right, because looking at the lead... So whatever happened to Cockrell, he did 141.1 last time, and his gap, the lead gap was evaporated. Top three are now separated by 0.7, so we need to look at the leaders now, because they should be all together. And if you're, and if you're correct, it should now be Bush in front of Cockrell, so that's going to be all crucial. Here they come. Yes, it is. Side by side for the lead. Cockrell goes back round the outside, so... At least for momentarily he was in front, but it's back now switched again, but he loses it on the exit. Oh, there's contact. Vansberger touches the back of Cockrell's car. Cockrell might be out of the race. The man who's in second place of the championship might well be done. He's onto the grass. Is he going to park the car? I think he might well have done. Tom Cockrell may well be retiring from this race, and it will now leave the battle for second place between Hugo Busch and Dominic Mansberger in the championship race. I cannot believe that. So whatever it looks like the contact between himself and Mansberger, well, Mansberger has, is only just coming through now, but he's several seconds back now. I worry for Mansberger, the front of his car as well. Again, that was right on the coolant system, um, as like I said, joins, rejoins the race. But yeah, I worry about the front of the, um, uh, the, the car and, and whether that is leaking. It doesn't look like there's any uh, fluid coming out the back of that, but clearly whatever it did it, it would have hurt the rear end of Cockrell's car, so maybe uh, he wasn't able to continue. It didn't look like there was too much damage there, but he just wasn't, he, as soon as he drove off the track, he wasn't coming back, was he? It's like he felt something was wrong. Yeah, it didn't look like a substantial amount of contact, but as you say, maybe to Tom Cockrell, he felt something on the rear, as you say, that just made you feel like this was, 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 wasn't something right with that car, but he couldn't continue. So, unfortunately, Tom Cockrell, he was really hoping for second place in the championship, whatever the issue was, 
maybe because he did have he did have a slower lap. Maybe it's related to that because he had some kind of issue that was coming in. Maybe it's a mechanical problem that was developing itself all the way through. It could have been a gear change problem, something like that, or the gearbox or the clutch issue that he wasn't able to solve. And actually, like you say, it cost him here the lead on the last lap and coming out of part bend, he wasn't able to change gear. Sometimes the gear stick can either get stuck or you can even have a gear stick failure on you. Uh, and at that point, yeah, you can't change gear. And maybe that's what we saw. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, it makes sense if you, you sort of read it like that. Yeah, we just saw a shot there of Tom Cockrell's car parked up just on the side of the circuit. I'm afraid that's another driver whose 2021 season has been ended prematurely. And it may well have been that if there was a, if that kind of problem, the only reason Mansberger hit the back of Cockrell was because he had a gear shift problem. So because of that, Mansberger just had nowhere to go. So uh, that's the case. Um, that's unfortunate. What it does now mean is that Bush and Mansberger, at the very least, don't have to worry too much about who's going to come second and third because whilst it is unfortunate that it's at Cockrell's expense given his demise now, it now does put uh, second and third into the hands of Bush and Mansberger respectively. So all they've got to do now is get to the end, which is easier said than done for some people, and then make it happen. Now Alex Vincent also meanwhile, he's up to third place. And I don't think he's had a third place. No, this, this will be his best results of the season. His previous best was, was two fourth places and that was uh, fourth place at the second race at uh, Stetterton, and then earlier on yesterday in the first race of Campbell's, he's about, he possibly could be about to be, if he stays where he is, get his best results of the season, which could be even better if he's coming across what could be a wounded Mansberger. Yeah, and I've just done a sort of quick calculation. I think if Mansberger was able to get past Bush with the fastest lap, I think the positions would swap again, so it's still worth him keeping his eye in, but but yeah, with minute and 18 to go, I don't think that is necessarily going to happen. The gap is too big at the front there, but yeah, great to see other people getting these results. You know, someone's misfortune can lead to a really you know, a great a result for someone else. Yeah, I think Mansberger's car's wounded because his last lap was a 144 compared to 142 for both Vincent and Mott. So I think possibly Mansberger, if he's not careful, I think he's practically assured third place in the championship because Tom Cockrell won't finish. However, what this could be is we could be looking at potentially, if he can't hold on, personal best by far for Alex Vincent getting second and Peter Mott getting a podium on his final race of the season. I wonder if he's expected that coming into this weekend. No, I, I, I doubt that was on his, uh, well, it was maybe on his Christmas list, but he wasn't expecting it, was <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that would be a great result. Here's here, back with the battle for uh, with Hilton here. And, and, yeah, I mean, you know, as we say battle down, we got the out move to the outside. Again, we see that work all, oh, though. It looked, probably looked worse from our position than it did on board there, actually. He had that all on the control, but yeah, it looked like he was jinking, wasn't he? he certainly fooled me. There's Hugo Bush, very comfortable leader. Like you said, there's no sign of Mansberger, and if he was le leaking fluid, his car could well struggle to get to the end. I think there's been a change, because it looked like Alex Vincent's car came through in second place. Here's Hugo Bush, meanwhile, so we'll get confirmation of that sight in a second, but Hugo Bush, he might have missed out on the title, but he's certainly going to come home in second place. He'll, have do, he'll do so some uh, eight points off the lead as they come through. Chris is looking outside the window and there has been a change. They're, they're very close. No. It's Mansberg is just ahead of that battle. He needs to uh, hold on to that, but he is still ahead just currently. Oh, and there's been a spin for James Hall. There's been contact there up at the mountain section. There's so much going on this yeah. final lap. We've got to try and work it out. The main thing is Hugo Bush wins the final race of the season and picks up runner-up spot in the championship. Now for second, third and fourth, here they come down the pit strip. What order is it going to be? They're going to come onto straight spin to sight right now in any second now. Mansberg is there. He'll just about hold on side by side for second place. Mansberger just holds on to it. Alex Vincent gets his first podium in third. And Peter Mott just misses out but gets by far his best result of the season with P4. What an effort that was. Now, James Hall was, was battling with Andy Lund. So I think Andy Lund's the one that's going to come through. In, or no, maybe not. Looks like he spun by himself. So James Hall spins by himself and still picks up fifth, which is incredible. Uh, Andy Lund should pick up P6. And this group of cars has been battling from 6th down to 10th, have been all at it all, all race long. There's Andy Lund, he will turn into the final corner and hold on to 6th position, a well-deserved 6th on what's been a very tumultuous up and down season for him results-wise. And then the rest of this uh, fantastic group is going to come through up towards the chequered flag, it'll be Eels in 7th, they're just as quick as you like. Hilton, Marriott, it's, no, so it's Hilton, then, uh, no sorry, Berg... Hilton, Berg, Marietta's hat could come through in that order. And then the last car that will come through is the slightly wounded Steve Lancaster who's just come past us. But that, after so much drama in that final race, it essentially provisionally gives Hugo Bush second place in the championship. Mansberger, only by the skin of his teeth, just holds on to third. Yeah, that was important at the end there. To, again, he needed those points to stay ahead of uh, Cockrell. Uh, but yeah, Hugo Bush there taking... Uh, what ended up being a, a great win, but it was a shame that it had to end with maybe a mechanical or something. Uh, my, my guess might be a, a broken
broken gear lever, uh, you know, that, that stopped him being able to change gear. But we'll see that and we'll find that out later. But I'm sure that's gutting that he's lost that opportunity to take that position. He was looking good early in the race, wasn't he, until those issues happened. Um, but Hugo Busch, again, he did enough to beat Mansberger on the day. And, and Mansberger obviously, uh, you know, helped well, easing his car home. So the final results of the final weekend for the Cage and Rose Sport Championship. The final race win goes to Hugo Busch by 10 seconds for Dominic Mansberger, who only just beats Alex Vincent to third. Vincent picks up his first podium of, of his Cage and Racing career from Peter Martin fourth. James Hall spins to, spins to keeps fifth. Then it's Andy Lund, Marcus Eels. Then it's um, Hilton Berg and Marianis rounding up the top 10. Then it's um, Hapgood in 11th, Arnold in 12th, and Lancaster 13th. But sadly, Tom Cockrell retiring and losing that, losing second and third in the points has to round up fourth provisionally. We also lost Adam West and Toby Boyce after they made contact earlier on.